really thinks about the game on another level, adapting to his opponent. As we have an engagement right at the start of this, Kilsen's going to have to get away by being very, very low. No weapons. No real armor. Stocking back up the rocket now and able to stabilize. But he does get away most importantly, right? So he does at least have a chance to uh, continue to fight on, not lose that first champion right off the bat. And let's see if he's going to be able to uh, turn this around against Sorlag. Gonna have a tough time to do a lot of damage against her. And it's paused with the lack of weaponry now. Very aggressive, nearly taking down the Doomslayer just with the super nail gun on its own. I know there's a hell of a lot of damage, but from that range, it's pretty incredible to do as much as he did. Yeah, 8 HP left. First rock's gonna land, and now Kelsey's maybe coming into his own here. More towards his comfort level with the rocket launcher. He's going back on the chase. So HP to work with here, and Claw's very low in health and has no chance to escape this, so a great little engagement there out of Kilson does net them the first frag here of our winner bracket final. Keep in mind, it's the best of five. Winner of this goes on to the grand final with a one series advantage. Now Kilson actually being pushed on, but the thing is, again, you mentioned just how tanky of a champion Doomslayer is. Took a couple of shots from the shotgun, forced out a ghost walk, and now he's going to read into the push. Nice. What a preemptive shot again. Kilson, this man... So I don't know, this man is, for me, favorite to win the whole tournament now. Yeah, I wouldn't disagree. Um, he's playing patiently, and as we would talk about in the Avic series, he utilizes sound cues extremely well. So it's a little bit careless from Claws, not having that rocket. It's a clear trap just to just jump out there. And it's not a trap that like, Kilson just sprung on him for the first time. This was a trap that he used time and time exactly. again in their last series, it's or the first series. Just basic carelessness from Claws. I mean, we've seen his damage potential in these fights. like. Sticking oh my. around. Oh my. What? He, he nearly killed Kilson. Yeah, he did. Kilson got really aggressive there. So he has no right to be there and he makes it happen. But at the end of the day, he needs to rein it in once again. Very similar to the way we saw Avex starting the series in being super aggressive. Right. And Kilson just coming out on top of these fights because he has a bigger stack because he played more patient around the items and just takes better engagements. Do you think Avic would be like a good counter to Claw's style? Just like the random aggressive aggression that he throws out can catch Claw's off guard? I mean, it definitely could work. I think the best counter we see is the way Kilson plays. Um, just letting Claw's play into his hands almost. All right, well, Claw's in the sword lag yet again here. The Doom Slayer for Kilson to start things off. Getting a little bit more of a slower paced game here, especially without the rail. And that's where we saw Claw's in their first match of the day against Vu really start to to excel was with the railgun. Yeah. This is the time where Kilson definitely needs to be a bit more careful now because the beginning of the last match, yes, Claws did a lot of damage, but he got no items and he got no weapons. And that's the situation Kilson was able to capitalize upon. But now the Sorlag has full weaponry and will be picking up probably both major items again. So this is the period, the most dangerous period of the game for Kilson. Well, he's actually gonna get some good damage down. No armor left. The LG is going to come out to knock her away. He will pick up the heavy armor, but he's still taking a hell of a lot of damage. Comes through the teleporter trying to fight this out oh. with the shotgun. And Kilson's very low on HP, but so's Claws. Looks like both of these players will just back away from each other. Once again, Live to fight another day. shotgun. Bit 48 damage to start with, following up with about 18, I think it was. So nice double blast, nearly killing Kilson, but just not enough. I think they're tracking that Kilson too on the LG. And he's showing that he can add this to his repertoire. Or is still willing to use it. The LG coming out again to knock him away. The rocket's not going to connect this time. Kilson's just going to back off, it seems, and get up some ground to Claws, who's going to leave pick up or had picked up the heavy armor. Nice and slow Staggering it, right? calculated. Yep, exactly. By Kilson. He needs to pick up a couple of the green armors. Might try and head over to the other one if he feeling out Claws now. Playing the mid-level game. Doesn't want to engage in that close combat while the Sword Lag is still stacked, but that rocket is a signal for him to move in. A great air rocket coming out from Claws to finish off the Doomslayer. Pretty much just on 100 health as well. And Claws. He's got the stack he needs here too. You can see Kills are trying to pounce. I think he's overestimating how much damage he's really done to him. <clears throat> or maybe he's just favoring this engagement. 68 damage. Look at this coming through. One rocket left. Whoa. He doesn't have a lot of HP, but he has the Ghost Walk. He catches him on the health pack. Doesn't have the rocket left. But the Asus bit comes through and connects. Oh, Claws. Claws fortunate. Kilson had the superior advantage in terms of position. He had Ghost Walk. He could have survived that, couldn't he? And it was the instant burst. Okay. So, I mean, I don't think he would have expected it. Oh, that went, almost went straight through Claws. And now he's well away from the items. Yeah, Mega Health, there we go. 
Kilson now has that one. It's a good, again, good split between the two two major items here. Yeah, but I don't even think Claw should have really have been given up the Sorlax so easily. The fact that he went over to those health bubbles was, again, a, a relatively simple mistake because it was clear what Kilson was going to do. Well, again, Kilson getting aggressive. 24 HP. Some armor. Get some health. And a tide on champions. One remaining for both. Injection's about to be up. And again, Kilson has the read on these timings perfectly. Yeah, and he, it would be in his interest to try and pressure claws while he's stuck in this room. He needs to pop the injection and he's extremely low. Can he stick around for this heavy? It's going to be risky, but Claws is slightly far away. Kilson's going to respect him. Actually, zones him out of this one too. Yeah, just a bit, nice place, Rocket. Too late. I thought he wasn't going to risk it, but Claws backed up himself. He's going to still go for the challenge, knowing he has the advantage here. Claws doesn't have the HP, and the Rocket's going to nice. connect. And Kilson pulls three back straight. And there you go, Kilson up 2 0 here on Corrupted Keep. Yeah, and Kilson's picking up all of the items. Claws is not doing an awfully good job at securing them. He's Great damage coming out, but it's not following up in it in the right way. Again, you think back to the, the sore lag that he lost. Yeah, it was unnecessary. It was a dangerous. It was great play from Kilson to do so much damage on the Mega, but then Claws is just slight miscalculation of where Kilson was going to go. Ooh, he's burning through him. You gotta be careful. The Acid Spit has not really connected too much. 79 HP and counting here for Kilson. He's going to back away. Still some armor for Claws. He's picked up some health bubbles. In the meantime, the shotgun has been taken out. And the shotgun's not really doing the damage, but the Berserk has been popped. He's looking to escape, and he has, again, gotten runaway accomplished. Quite fortunate to get out of there with his life. Claws did trap him in that heavy armor area. Just the speed of the Berserk in the end being sufficient. I think Kilson more looked like Usain Bolt there. That's how fast he was able to run away. He's rocket bouncing out of Claws. is insane! And Kilson had no chance there. Yep, Kilson peeking his head in, and the first rocket knocking him up into the air. Oh, and then it's uh, easy pickings. Ghost Rock used right away too. Heavy armor about to be up. So is Mega. Aspen has come down, and it did connect, and he Ooh. gets another kill here. Unfortunately, it was the completely right decision to be there, and it's an area of this game where Kilson's shown a great deal of level above claws in pressuring that heavy armor in particular, but taking the high ground on both major items is always, whoa, dealing a lot of damage when claws is looking to pick these items up. That's the LGL, but switching back to the rocket launcher. Claws giving him a little bit of respect here as Kills wants to push in for the kill. He's got the injection, has been used. The LG not coming out, he gets the kill. Let's see if Claws, or sorry, if Kilson can do this again here and pull a three kill yeah. streak back. Kilson said, going to get out of there yeah so Kilson said he understood the way in which he needed to play claws and there is a big difference for me in the way in which he is approaching claws and the way he approached Avec as we come with a mid air so the way he approached Avec <coughs> was even a lot more defensive than this because Avec took a lot of care in securing items whereas claws it seems a little bit reckless around the item pickups and he allows Kilson leverage and getting in position and to rain down rockets from the higher ground. Whereas Avec was very calculated in not committing for items if Kilson was ever in a position to do that. And in trying to bully Kilson out of the way. And Claus doesn't take that care. Okay. Let's well, see if that continues to happen for a series or maybe he can change up his own style because Kilson's definitely come prepared as you're saying. LG nice. right off the bat. Feels like Kilson's in Vegas with all these sevens. <laughs> <laughs> and again, I mean, proving the LG still, it, it's not its not terrible, it's not bad, but it's just situational at the moment. Yeah. And I against Sora, like, oh, just like that, the timing. He shot exactly right when he came through and he wants to finish it, he wants the final blow. And he might be able to get it here with the LG, knocks him away. Mega is now up, he's going to pick this one up too. And might how die. can you escape this? Ooh. I thought one of those rockets was going to do almost a full. Awesome play coming up because then you just said situational. I think it's underused. Dear Lord, like the timings on these shots. Remember, they come to the teleporter. Shotgun in the face. Kilson's very low in health, but Kilson has the ability to run away, though. I, I love the aggressive play of claws, though, on the Knicks. Like, shotgun, all I need. Let me just do like 80 damage to you off the bat. But Kilson, look at that, just can fighting his way back in this one. Two kills with only a minute of time passed. Yeah, yeah. The shotgun claws. Claws. It's not against using it, and to be honest, I, I actually like it. 
Because I think people can underestimate, you know, the shotgun sometimes and how much damage it truly can do. Yeah. We saw against... It's not going to work as the only weapon you have against Kilsen here. Claus doesn't know any other way apart from forward. Uh, we saw against Vu, he was a bit more reserved, but that's when Vu was using the speed of the Anarchy and, and really upsetting Claus. Ooh. Because Kilsen's almost letting him get into these dangerous positions and then capitalizing on Claus's Ooh. recklessness. Well, that was a great rocket there too, and you can see that Kilsen was waiting for the heavy armor, but he's got to back away. It's going to be so Ooh. dangerous to drop in. He will secure it, but Claus missing the jump, missing the ability to get through towards Omega, and now Kilsen getting both of the pickups in a very good position to challenge out against Claus and to close out this first map. Yeah, and he has the Ghost Walk up in five seconds, which he might be looking to use aggressively because as we know, the Doom Slayer doesn't have a great kind of escape mechanism. And Kilson's done this before. He saw him previously using it on cooldown to get aggressive against Avic in the last match. Heavy Armor picked up again here, and Kilson definitely has control of these items, but the thing is, Mega was taken a lot quicker. Midair is not going to land and Claws and Kilson nice. both really scared to push down, what but rock. even with the 79 damage being done from that rock, it's not going to matter and Kilson will take the first map in this best of five series. And it looked, again, quite easy. I feel Claws just seems careless when it comes to the basic strategy within the duel in that Kilson is always around these items and it doesn't seem that Claws ever learns his lesson. That Kilson is quite happy for him a lot of the time to secure them. And in, in response, he's dealing out like 150, 200 damage a lot of the time. So Claus needs to try and, if he wants to take these items, just secure them, make sure Kilson's not around, bully him off a bit more, just be more aware positionally than he normally is. And that wasn't so much of a problem before because the rockets were a little bit weaker. He was able to then to bully people off the map with his lightning gun in between the pickups. And he, he normally made them so low they weren't there to challenge. Whereas now that's not the case. Well, going into our second map, we'll see how Claus might change things up in this series. And obviously, a lot of pressure on him, you know? We talk about him as being a great player, but we also have to keep in mind for the newer viewers out there, he's won the biggest tournament in Quake history in his, at QuakeCon uh, this last year. In his first ever LAN, I believe. And not only did he win Duel, he won Sacrifice as well. Like, he won a ridiculous amount of money over the course of those two days, the big four days. Yeah. And he has a title to defend, you know? Yeah, you want all that money, but yeah, is it as good as the glory that you get for being called the best player in Quake? Yeah, and not only duel, but also sacrifice. He's one of the newer names. He's one of the younger players, but he's created a status for himself where everyone looks to him as he has a target on his back now. Yeah. So taking him out and seeing Kilson put up this player of performance is, is very impressive. And if he wants to obviously be considered as one of the best in the game, he needs to refine his strategy based on the how the duel is playing out and how the, the patch is playing out in a sense. So let me ask you this. So we look at Kilson and when we talk to him, he has set like strats of how he wants to play against certain people. He changes his style to depend on who he's playing against. Yeah. Do you see the same for Claus though? Or is Claus always trying to play his style and never adapting? He adapted slightly versus Vu. I mean, it's very dependent because there's so many things that happen in the duel that change the way you need to approach it. And we saw Claus take, make it a little bit of an adaption versus Vu when Vu was very much on top. But I think Claus goes out with knowing his strengths and knowing how he wants to play and just tr just goes after that because that's what works for him. Mm -hmm. And it's an experience thing. We got we got Vu, we got Kilson, we got Kulo, these, peer these players with 10, 15 years experience and that enables them to be far more reactive in their gameplay than someone like Claus who's so... He's 19, right? Yeah, he's 19. You've got Kilson who's 30. Heavily, heavily aim-based, which often define your style for because that's what you rely on and it's it's up to you then to refine that in itself it's something that strengths when he first hit the scene found big problems with and he relied on his aim so much that the rest of his dual game is quite limited to begin with and it's just something that will come over time all right well, i'm curious to see how he actually does grow uh, over the course of these next years in quake definitely uh, already making his name as you already mentioned kills him gonna be on blood run here i'm gonna say it's a map that he definitely chose yes i i yeah, for sure. And we have Claus going with the Sorlak too, so maybe Claus is trying to do something similar to what we had Vu do yesterday against Cypher. Just stalling things out. That was a good rocket coming through to Kilson. Not going to get the follow-up rail. Oof. We can see how low Claus is, and with that rail coming through, both of them are giveable. Yes. Oh no, they're right on top of each other. Oh no, Kilson, turn around. 
He does get the rocket, knocks him into the air, but a great use of claws and the tech again to jump off the wall after being bounced in the air to be unpredictable Ooh. of where he was going to be. The fairway rocket connects, but not with enough damage. Yeah, it's surprising to me that Claws has ditched the Anarchy. That was his staple before, and he's gone back to the Sawlug. So that obviously is a signal that he's refining and changing the way he thinks about the game. Oof. Nice shot, got two big blasts coming out. You can tell Kilson's probably not going to be happy about that. The Ghost Walk, though, being used right off the bat. Has him caught out, gets a 100 damage rocket in. He wants to go for the chase, and Claws is going to have Ghost Walk. But will the rocket land? Oh. He could have ran away from that one, but not expecting the rocket to hit. Ghost Walk was also up. Yep. And now Kilson tying things up here. He's oh, going to he miss that. That really probably should have hit. Maybe that one as well. Claws, I don't know. He keeps challenging out on this. I'm, come out, I'm surprised he Kilson missed this many rails in a row. He's no Jacob. <laughs> Yep, it's definitely no Jeff. And again, another rail going to be missing here. Again, I wish we could see, because uh, we don't have the ability to, we're not actually specking in-game, we're taking a feed from the observers, um, to see Statistics. some of these stats. Yeah, because yeah, I want to see like the percentages of like his rockets hitting, and also his rail here. It's very important to, to tell about styles, and tell about you know how they're feeling against certain opponents. That rail will land on the claws, though, so Kilson's going to have to back away. Yeah, and I think... Like we said earlier, Claws is rail, something's underrated, something he needs to use. Another great rail coming out. So that gives him a bit of a way back into the match. Kilson was obviously dominating the last game based on his positional play and general output around items. But if Claws is hitting these rails in between items, then it becomes very difficult for Kilson to continue that type of progress. Oh, nice little double jump for Claws again. Being ever so patient with the rail. Getting to the heavy a little bit early. He doesn't have a lot of HP to work with here. If that rocket hit, it might have been the demise of Claws. For sure. It would have been a very simple mistake again. Just basic timing errors. Oh. 180 rail. It's not easy to hit. Oh, they actually dodge it again. Kilson dodging now two attacks. But Claws again Ooh. with the rail. Two out of three. He'll take himself that first round here on Blood Run. Yeah. Claws is rail looking on point. Definitely one of his stronger suits. I wonder what map we have played twice then in this in this series. We didn't get the uh, the maps delivered to us today or on this match. Yeah, we'll find out. <laughs> oh, pushing again with a shotgun. Kilson's respecting it a lot more this time. He actually gets the mega health in the nick of time too, and the chase has come. Oh, oh no! Shotgun v rocket launcher too. Oh no! Oh, I was expecting like a gentleman's agreement there to not fire to back away. Yeah, that's frustrating. Because Kilson was looking directly at him, so you just hold that left click. Whereas Claws had a turn, all the Berserk coming in. 20 HP, can he keep his distance? Yes, he does, he knocks him down. He's actually Wait, going for the chase. crazy. Okay, so maybe that was like a, okay, let's just reset. Let's just lose one a piece. Because maybe he felt bad about that kill. Because there was no need for him to fall down. There was no need. He felt he had Claws on the ropes, and Claws just backtracked and smacked him from below. Oh. Kilson, he's just dodging everything. He picks up a health Whoa. back in the rail. It's not going to connect. Close. Very but, close. But no cigar. But clenchingly close. Five seconds on Mega. Claws is in a position to challenge us. Three rockets. Got rail as well. Does secure this one. So now Kilson is going to be definitely on the back ropes here. Trying to find his way back into it. And I'm guessing that's going to have to come through just chip damage and using that speed to his advantage. Kilson knows where he is, though. She missing hard rail, but an important one of that. Nice. Yeah, Kilson, like, uh, Anarchy is going to be really rough to play against Claws with just the, the accuracy, the sheer amount of damage that Claws can do with the rail gun. You don't have a lot of HP to work with, and every rail you take. Yeah, basically just taking out the next 20, 30 seconds because you're going to have to restack back up to, to even compete. Yeah, exactly. But it's uh, he doesn't want to engage anyway, so it is the right decision because he, as we saw earlier, he leaves himself a get out every time. Sometimes he does leave himself a bit vulnerable, but he's very happy taking these direct oh. aim trades for that exact reason. Well, the rocket coming through, Claws actually stopping his momentum there. Really well done. He gets to make a health, so Kills is not going to have a chance to close out this kill. It pops the... Injection just to make sure he can't escape. Make sure he doesn't get bursted down. So he has a little bit of extra speed. 
He comes back in for the heavy, but the heavy's not up, but he does get the positional advantage with the farm. The rockets are being spammed in. He's too close to a wall, and Claws now. Looking for that last frag, he does have a one chip in advantage. Here the in the second round of blood run. Error is coming out from both of them here. Doesn't look it's gonna happen again though. Kilson gets the bounce, gets the double. Won't get the follow up as he finally gets the kill though with the third rocket. Not sure why Claws was coming back out. Kilson could have pushed in, but doesn't want to run into that acid spit. Well, he knows it's on cooldown now. We just saw it on his screen being shot. You can see it here from the high ground. Connecting rail after rail. Is it really close? Nice. Why? Because Claws. Did he over? Did he over or uh, overestimate how much health Kilson had? No, he just trusts his aim, and that's what you do when you are a very aim-based player. Often you put yourself in situations you don't need to be in because you trust your capability to hit more shots than your opponent. And he just wanted to get one more rail off. It was just a little bit greedy. Well, it pays the price for it. Again, Kilson hitting rail time and time again. Actually, that's a good use of the <laughs> good use of the enemy rail to get some distance, to get the escape. He's got to be careful though. He's got 92 HP, yes, but. He has no, the potential to have way more stack here than Claws. He has no rail either, so that's going to be something he needs to pick up at some point. Shotgun again coming in. Claws getting up close. Goes like has been popped, and Kilson's got to be careful. The Gauntlet has come in, and Claws. Oh, that's pain. Slicing and dicing, but wait, there's more. Realizing too late, that's probably what Claws is up to. But there's no Ghost Walk up now, so this could be dangerous. Injection used too. He's trying to close this distance. He's trying to. Get the shots. That rocket almost bounced himself into it. And Kilson's going to get the chase. He's going to get the kill. So trading one apiece now. It was close. Missed rockets coming out from both sides, but finally Kilson getting that kill. Needs oh. to get out of here. This could be dangerous. Doesn't have ejection either. He's dead. He's dead, man. A few nail guns. That's what it takes. I've actually been like thoroughly impressed with Claws of Sorlag. Yeah. I mean, Vu. Vu Played a little bit of a different style with her. He used her specifically on this map just to survive with like a uh, kill advantage. But the way we've seen Claws now, the second time using Sorlag from Crouch to Keep to here, the nail gun has been ridiculous. He's had some really good aim with it. Mm. I agree. He killed some camping that teleporter, wasn't he? He was. Um, the champion is definitely viable once again. Just a little bit underappreciated in the scene at the minute. So well, Claws going to be spamming away. To prevent that heavy from being taken, and leave Kilson just used a rocket jump to get there and takes a rail for his trouble, so pretty much losing everything he just gained from that. It's a good job by Claus to just eliminate the advantage that Kilson was able to get from the heavy armor. Ghost walks back up, so he's feeling a bit more confident now to push out on the map. Maybe take a fight with the Doom Slayer. But would probably like to get the next heavy armor. What's up right now? Kilson's going to be really risky to go for it with these rockets being thrown in. He does get the ghost walk off though and that rocket goes straight through him but the chase is looking good. He gets a lot of damage done but did that do one damage? I think it did do like no damage. Okay. Unlucky. I don't know if Kilson's going to be happy with that because that looked directly on him and Unlucky. that could have been... Lucky. <sighs> he doesn't look happy. No. But well, I mean, when there's a red light on you, of course you're not going to look happy. Yeah, I guess. But no, yeah, I agree. He doesn't look happy here. Two rounds to one. Claw's putting up a much better fight. Slowing the pace of the game down. Not overcommitting for items a lot of the time. And using that rail to really go oh. effect. Okay. He wants it. The LG's going to push him away. The Ghost Walk going to be used. I'm having fine with that. That's, like, that's a good trade, right? Ghost Walk for Berserk? Yeah, he knew that Claw's was trapped. So. Well, double rockets coming in. Look how low Claws is. Mega Health's about to be up too. He just heard him, so he might chase. But nah, he's going to secure the item and try to probably to protect this heavy as well. Yeah, we we'll do just that. So there we go. This is going to be tough now for Claws to fight back. Kilson's, Kilson for sure knows exactly where he is. And where he's going, apparently. <laughs> and now the ghost walks up and Claws is safe. Well, I mean, you say that. But he's also, okay, he will use, I was just going to say, we've seen Claws twice now yeah. not use Ghost Walk when he could have to survive. Youthful confidence. Yeah. <laughs> so arrogance? I don't know. <laughs> Do I know? Is, is that like another, is that a synonym for it? But no, yeah. Definitely confidence is something that Claws does not lack. And now Claws has set up his own trap here and Kills is going to run Whoa, into it. Oh my god. <laughs> 
Straight to the face. See, in other games we call that skeeting. Because, skeeting? Yeah, in Left 4 Dead. This uh, was these uh, things that jump at you, and you shoot them a shotgun midair, and you 100 to 0 them, which is really difficult to do. It's called a skeet. Uh. That's what I'd call that, but I don't know if that works in Quake. No. I don't think I'm long enough in the scene to be making up terms to be used for casters. <laughs> Suit, help me out. Rocket be thrown in again from the high ground. Claw's a little bit trapped, but he's okay. We'll give out the jump pad and runs great directly rocket. into a rocket. Again, Pilsen hears him. He smells blood in the water. Ooh, he has out of rail. Ammo there, that would have been a shot. That would have been a lot of extra damage done. This is nice. Knows that Claus isn't going to push in for the, the Mega, so trying to secure at least two damage on that heavy. It takes two rails though. Definitely going to be forced away. Claus pushing in for the kill. Should be. Ooh, just gets away. I thought he took the spit. Somehow avoiding that. Oh, he's on the chase still. Kilson gets a nice little jump with the uh, the rocket, but he doesn't have the HP left to survive. He doesn't want to let Claus get the kill, so he kills himself instead. But maybe now Kilson on the Nyx might actually go for the chase here. Okay, nice. not going to have an opportunity just now. And armor's about to be up with Megas shortly to follow. I think this is definitely one of the harder maps to, for my limited experience, I guess I'll say. Um, to come back to, to come back in, like once you lose control of the of the items, they're just so cl in close proximity of each other that it's yep. really difficult to like it's stagger them, obviously, and, and to kind of be in a position to counter them. Oh, what a reaction there from Claws. And your point is right, this is one of the oldest maps in the game. And it's notoriously one of the most difficult in terms of dueling skill, so Sorry, I said something right? You did. Yes. Unknowingly. Thank but you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Kilson gets the kill on the railgun, though, and there's a minute 30 left to go in round four. Claw's already up two, so the pressure's on Kilson here. He's trying to back away. Ghostwalk is going to come up, so he's going to be fine to go for the engagement. He's actually going to do just that. He's going to go for the chase. Yeah, he knows. It's going to rocket jump. Rail. One more, and he's dead. Kilson. Tying it up to two to two. Damn. Some of these shots, like... Both of them, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of these shots we've seen today just insane with the rail and really proving like why the railgun is such a, a a great thing to watch it's so rewarding you're a big fan of the railgun i'm i'm the bigger fan of the rocket launcher but i can appreciate the rail quite a bit i like all guns except the uh machine gun tribal. no i love the tribal uh, i'm gonna be that guy who gets so good at the tribal you know like in other games you know uh one tricking nice rail never gonna happen lg coming in two for the finish actually ghost walk they both want to teleport at the same time, so does he hear it? And they both go towards the health pack, and Kilson's going to get the better of him. Yeah, I mean, that was close, but it could have gone either way. I mean, the timing of going through the, the slipgate, though. The slipgate? <laughs> yeah, it's called slipgate. Is it? That's, oh, yeah, that's yeah, legitimately it's what it's called. Yeah, it technically is. Uh, don't you play this game? <laughs> it's called teleporter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, it is. But, can you, but he, obviously, it they is. went through the same time, so they didn't yeah. hear each other. Or, I mean, more importantly, no, Kilson didn't hear claws. We're pretty sure he did. Oh, he did? Okay. We had him one at the end. Ooh. Trading. Both on their final champion of the round. One minute has even passed. <laughs> Claw's going to have, I think, an advantage right on this map. The fact that he's playing Sorry against Anarchy. Last champion each. Close quarter, the burst damage he can do with a rocket launcher plus the acid spit. Leaving his uh, Sorlax to the last full rocket. He might be dead. Oh, five HP left. He's going Why for the re-challenge. Yeah. There's no way Kilson expects him to be over there. But he's going to rocket jump back up, and, and Claus is still not es escaped. He's still not home free. He retreats back to more health and packs, but it doesn't matter. Kilson takes it. There you go. Kilson up 2 0 in the series. Yeah. Putting up a clinic here. Had to come back in that game. Yeah. Claws, I definitely feel reacted off of that corrupted to keep and looked far more composed, particularly around the major items, um, and gave Kilson a, an incredibly hard time. Uh, but Kilson just in himself kept hitting those shots, and I thought he picked up the aggression a little bit in response to that. He, that Claws wasn't making those mistakes, so then Kilson began to adapt and force the game a little bit more, and that's when he, we saw him come out a little bit more on top. You know, we talk about like Claws as kind of like a, an aim star, I guess, right? He relies on his aim so heavily. Yeah. But I feel like Kilson, I don't know, his aim in like some of these shots he's hitting off. I mean, before this 
game. He was probably regarded as perhaps the best gamer in the world. Um, went on form, but he was really it was it was inconsistent. Like he was he would go into games hitting like 50, 60, 70 percent in rail, and then the other games he might hit 20, 30, mm. uh, and like it might build off. So he's um, he seems to definitely have honed his game, and maybe it's one of those things he's matured with age. But he's like playing, a fine wine, like, like a fine German wine. Uh, but he's <laughs> said no one ever. He's playing cold <laughs> and calculated, um, and it's it's really good to see because it's completely different to the way he used to play. Who would you say is like the most well-rounded player in Quake Champions? In Quake Champions, yeah, between aim, between mental game, um, between strategy. It seems to the, the sands seem to shift so much. I mean, from what we've seen to date. Probably Kilson or Avic. Okay. I think many people would say Cypher. Uh, cool is up there as well, but obviously getting knocked out now. Like well, I mean, obviously, the, I mean, results do matter a, a, a good amount, but if you were to like discount results and just based off of how you know the players and how you see the perform in matches, obviously, any of the players here could have easily won the entire tournament. Yeah. Even the ones that have been knocked out already. I've been really impressed with Kilson this tournament. I didn't see much of him in Denver. He was, I thought he was super unlucky in QuakeCon. He was one of the strongest there. Many people thought he'd go all the way. I think he'll still be up there as one of my top ones. I, I just think Avic always puts on a great show. There are a few weaknesses, but overall he, he's super exciting to watch. I feel like Kilson plays like a really calculated game the entire way through, yeah. where Avic has that potential to be extremely explosive like mid-match. Definitely. Just completely catch you off guard, get the kills, and then snowball from there. I thought it was really refreshing to see Cypher yesterday. Yeah. He, he's His slash definitely was, out his, was great. He definitely, felt, he definitely out of shape, but the picks he was bringing out very much against the meta. And um, yeah, I thought that was nice, but he completely underperformed. So uh, for me, yeah, Kilson at this point in time up there for me. Oh, here we go. Third map. Kilson up 2-0 to zero here in the series. Nix v Nix off the bat. And already a big fight breaking out here between the two. The Rockets just so close. Doing enough damage. And that's going to have to be a Ghost Walk coming out soon. But he gets to bounce into the rail. Forcing Kilson's Ghost Walk to escape. But he's not done just yet. He wants to fight. Ooh. And Claws gets the better of him there. Yeah, nice Rockets from Claws. Good decision from Kilson to push it. Knowing that Claws didn't really have any other option. But perfect placement in the end. Well, there's a big 15-second window here between the two. And Kilson can take advantage of it, and he might be able to do that. You can see the shotgun again coming out of Claws. He doesn't have the Ghost Walk for another 10 seconds. And Kilson gets the frag. Smart play out of him. Yeah, recognizing once again Ghost Walk is down, putting on the pressure. Catching Claws in the mid-ground with no escape. Rail inches away. Kilson himself needs oh. one. I want to see how Kilson does against Claws of Slash, actually. I don't believe we saw much Slash. I mean, we didn't get to see much Claws against Kilson in the first match yesterday since it was such a, a quick affair. But I want to see, you know, when Claws gets comfortable on the Slash and how Kilson can deal with that. Because we saw Vu struggle really, really badly against Cypher. Yeah, that's true. He couldn't hit rails. He was struggling with rockets. But I want to see how Kilson nice will be able to do. And, 6 HP left. He will get the trade, most importantly. That was probably a kill that Kilson should never have been able to pick exactly. up. Exactly. That initial dodge is what set him up to even trade there. He should never really have brought that out. Well, now one apiece. We're going to see the Slash come in. Is he just baiting him in there here? I think he's going to die. Wow. He does. Jeez. That was, that was a mind game right there. He just read that he was going to come back. Yeah, the initial rocket from... Claws was good, and that alone would have he would have assumed Kilson would have backed off to the mega. But, but what was Claws going back for from the rail? Because there was he didn't need the time shards to get the rockets and then to hit a rail when Kilson was going for right. mega health. Okay, smart read again then. Already both double nixes coming out off the bat here in round two. Kilson's two rounds away from getting himself into the grand final somewhere he has not been the entirety of Quake Champions. Definitely a big win for this man, and yeah, he's and definitely put in the work for it. I'd say. And the pressure is certainly on Claws. We opened by saying, and Kilson opened by saying, he's not going to change a thing. It's up to Claws if he wants to if he wants to change. And Claws at the moment hasn't done that. Oh, look at this up close fight. He can call with the rail out. He's going to have a shotgun. Or he just go for the gauntlet. Kilson gets the kill. Did Claws not have shotgun? No, he actually, he didn't have rocket launcher. He did have a shotgun, but he went for the gauntlet instead. Yeah, the gauntlet is slightly more reliable if you can get up close. Definitely more reliable. Oh. That's what Shell has come in. 
full rocket Punching. as well. Oh, he's going to go on the chase here, isn't he? But it's going to be so hard to keep up the speed, but he's been able to do just that. The LG comes out. He had no rockets left. Now the Railgun, he's actually on the back foot himself, getting knocked into the air, and Claws, I think, realizing Kilson had no rockets available to him, punishes him for that. That overcommitment, that overaggression was Kilson's downfall, and Claws playing so smart. Yeah, Claws not trying to escape through the the long tunnel towards Mega was why he won that fight, because Kilson dropped thinking he would. that's the obvious route, and that's the easiest place to rail him. But double backing around, making sure that Kilson had no angles, and then was able to follow in when Kilson didn't change weapon. Oh, Kilson's kind of stuck here, isn't he? He's going to have the heavy armor. He's going to have to fight his way out of this one. You can see Claus keeping him at arm's length again, trying to use the rail to the utmost advantage. Almost opportunity here. And Kilson's again looking for the fight. Only one kill apiece. That initial rail is going to land. Kilson has dropped down the second rail. Claus, can he get the third? Should be following him down here with the rocket. He knows he has him running. It should finish him off here. The jumps are coming in so perfectly. The rail's going to miss again. Claws. Get out. Uh, he, oh. he does. Oh, Claws. That's a really unlucky. I think it's a combination of unlucky for Claws, but really well timed jumps for Kilson when the pressure was there, when he knew he had no health left to just time his jumps to dodge the rockets. Because there was a rocket that was shot out that only did seven damage. That could have easily been 30, 40, or 50. Yeah. But he jumped at the right time to create maximum distance away from the explosion. That's true. And now again, Claws is getting. Should die here. The rocket in the corner somehow didn't hit. A nice fadeaway rail to keep Kilson at bay to make sure he can't follow up with a rail of his own. Well, two and a half minutes, half past here. Remember, this is the winner bracket finals. The Italian Esports Open 2017 live in Lucca, Italy. And Kilson hitting the direct rocket what in the air. Rocket. That. Oh, again, trading. This is not the first time this has happened here, ZSX. I think it's like the third or fourth time we've seen these two trade kills in a fight. The Berserk Punch has come in. Six HP oh, left. He's being chased, down. and Claus gets it. Claus will put a round on the board here. Kilson wishes there's a few stone heavier to drop down that bit quicker. Should get an interview question for Kilson. How's it feel to be fisted right there? Oh, oh man. Yeah, at least he found it funny. He sees the funny. Yeah, he laughed. He heard me. He's like, haha, Jason, you're so funny. Thanks, man. But that was that was pretty good though, because you're in the air, right? How are you gonna escape that? You can't you can't. Yeah, he was willing himself down to the mega. You can <laughs> see it. So I was gonna miss that first rail. And he's railable now. I think he knows, yeah. He does. Oh, that timing! Nice Kilson. That was an outplay. Hundred percent. It was. Ghost walks right when his end so the gauntlet doesn't hit. And follows up with his own rocket launcher to boot. Oh and claws. Great rockets. He's stuck in a corner. Between a rock and a hard place and a Somehow rocket. How Claws gets away relatively healthy. Look, those rockets were much closer than the damage. Not again. Ooh. Well, we are playing on land. They have one ping. Claws going to come off worse again in the little bit of error. No, he's going to get away. And he's able to get the full stack back up. So you talked about Slash on this map, right? Yes. And how fast she is to get around. What about Anarchy? Who do you kind of rate is like generally faster to get around with if they're both equally skilled on both both uh, champions? Slash is quicker on this map. Okay. The yeah, you've got the large open mid areas, which means you can make jump. Anarchy can't, so you can swap from one area to the, the other, one side of the map to the other with great ease. Okay. Well, Kelsey gets a nice frag there. So now Claw's back on the last last champion. He actually wants to push Claws. Kilson should be able to escape though, right? He's got the speed. Yeah, he'll easily be able to escape. But Claws is turning up the aggression now. Maybe he has a little bit of desperation setting in and just trying to keep Kilson from... Because Kilson's been pushing him. So I think maybe Claws in retaliation to that is trying to keep Kilson at bay by doing more damage. He's got the rail now. Oh, what a shot! Not easy hit as well onto a light. Oh, oh my god. Well, he doesn't do it once, he does it twice in a row. Kilson probably not expecting that, so the speed advantage he did have is now gone. Yeah, it was unnecessary. Um, Kilson realizing that Claus didn't have much weaponry to his name and thought he could sneak in and out, but just a great rail. And there you go, Kilson getting the final kill on the Claws there. Kilson's air rockets have been ridiculous yeah. this tournament. They have. They seriously have. I think he's been hands down my favorite player to watch when it comes to rocket launcher. Yeah, there's, there's these all these pushes that players are making would probably work against the majority of other players, would definitely work on other patches. And yet somehow Kilson's pulling these rockets out the bag. And it's such high pressure situations, right? Yeah, exactly. Winner bracket, finals. Nah. 
Again, Kilson has the high ground. He's bouncing claws, but they both have ghost walks, so ideally, neither of them should die off the bat. Okay, close. <laughs> Crazy. Did he rocket launch up there himself? Yeah, he did. Oh. Nice. Oh, 60 damage rocket coming in, both of them. Sub 50 HP until Kilson picks up this health glow. Oh! God! I've heard of pre-firing, but that was something else there with the rocket. That's some great prediction. Knowing Claws wanted to go for the, the health there. He's uh, stuck. He, he wants to go for this. Oh he's my lord, Kilson. And he's got one more frag. He doesn't know where he's born though. I think he does now. One frag between him and the grand finals of this tournament. Gets one a double Good rail. Can he close this out in style? He's on the chase. Oh, he misses oh. a shot that most likely should have landed out of him. But He's on the back foot. He knows where he is. Oh, Good there game. it is. Kilson, 3-0 against Claws. We'll advance through into so in the grand finals. In this tournament alone, we've got seven games to zero. Kilson versus Claws. That is impressive. That is. I think Kilson has definitely shown what he can do here in Quake Champions, and he definitely earns that spot here in the grand finals. That means Claws will head to the lower bracket grand finals, which will be our next match where he'll be playing up against the winner of Avik and Vu. Let's head down to the stage and hear what Kilson Welcome has to say. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Let's hear it for Kilson. Now, Kilson, a word for your opponent to start off. Yesterday, you really had his number. I'm not even sure if he took a round off you. This, even though you swept the series, it looked a lot closer than it did yesterday. Yeah, it was. I mean, he got more and more used to the matches, how it feels like over here. But uh, yeah, I felt like it started from yesterday. Uh, I have like the class code, so. <laughs> and you don't have to think about it anymore. It's a reality. You now have both feet firmly planted in the grand finals. I mean, you, you must be enjoying it. Talk me through how you are feeling. It's a question no one wants to ask, but I can see the look on your face. Yeah, I mean, it's quite a while ago for me being in a real grand final uh, in a tournament, being 2012 or 13, I think, uh, if I remember, 12, yeah, 12 it was. Uh, yeah, such a long while ago. Now I'm here again in a grand final and in a pretty stacked tournament, actually. Yes. We can't deny that. And yeah, I feel really good about my situation right now, waiting there for the other players, relaxing, do whatever I want and just watch the games and yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, your first grand finalist, one more time for Kilson. We're going to pass it over to the desk now. A very strong victory there, but a little bit closer, as we mentioned, than it was yesterday. Let's find out what went down.